The shiur today is the uh, day of the Daf Yomi. <coughs> that it's also a yor site. It's dedicated to the memory of Rabbi Aaron Kotler, Rabbi Aaron Ben Shneu Zalman. It's his yor site. It's memory of the uh, great Rosh Hashiva of Lakewood, New Jersey, and giant Torah scholar. Today, in the um, uh, page 44 of Tractate Shabbat, we're going to deal with Hilchot Tiltul, caring, sometimes caring because you need to carry that chefetz, that item, sometimes indirect caring, and also, times allow, we go to a Hilchot Tumayim Tahara. Mishnah, Metal Telin Ner Chadash Avalo Yashan, Rabbi Shimon Omer Kol Anerot Metal Telin Chutz Minaner Adulek B'Shabbat. In those days they have an oil lamp. That oil lamp was good for a certain period of time, but it was made out of cheres. It's like porcelain. So the Mishnah said you can carry it if it's a brand new, meaning you didn't use it, you didn't lit on that um, candle, but not something that's already used once. Why? Because there is a concept that's called Maus Leshimush. Maus Leshimush meaning that it was used and all the, the uh, things around that leftover, people will not um, have uh, the intent, the desire to reuse it. So because of that, it's under the category of Mukze, meaning that it's set aside, and therefore we carry new but not old one. Um, in general, in those days, they used to have this type of, of a, a foundation of the um, um, lamp um, for other purposes, such as um, carry items. Some people to this very day carry coins, carry other things in this special um, path. Now, if um, they didn't use it at all, the first Tana said that it's fine. Um, you can use it for other uh, purposes, but since you use it one time, so it's because the oil that left over, it's already under the category which called maus. Maus meaning that it's um, disgusted. It's not something that people wish to use. So therefore, um, since people do not have the desire to use it for other purposes, so therefore um, um, it's considered, according to Tanakama, muktze mechamat mi'us, meaning that it's muktze, it's like set aside because people don't have the des desire, it's like disgusting over that. And therefore, Rashi said, it's, uh, you cannot assume betil tul, you cannot carry it. Now, the player of Shua elaborated on this Rashi, and he said that because, in general, we're not allowed to light candle on Shabbat itself, so therefore, it's not ready on Shabbat for not other purposes. Uh, and because of that, um, it's a full uh, category of Muktzen, you cannot use it. However, Rabbi Shimon disagreed with Tanakama and he said that a person can carry um, uh, that item. He holds that um, any kli, any utensil, cannot be under the category of mukze because it's um, used already. It's like maus. So he allowed to use um, um, not only brand new um, um, candle um, and lamp, but also old one. But um, he said that the, 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 even I allow, Rabbi Shimon said, I allow to carry that oil lamp from one location to another, it was one condition, that it's already extinguished. But if it's still lit, so he said that uh, you cannot carry. The reason for that is obvious. Um, the fear is that the person, while he is doing that, he may indirectly extinguished the, the uh, candle, and that's Melacha of Mechabeh. Now, the oil and the foundation, and just as a side note, the, the oil and the foundation, it's called Basis Ledavarasu. It's a concept that we uh, use a lot of time. Basis, it's like the foundation for something that it's forbidden. So the Basis, the foundation of the oil, it's Basis Ledavarasu. So, the Chazunish said 
the whole idea of mukze it's because it's um, in one hand people may use it for other purposes but on the other hand there are certain limitations so they have the category of mukze but not the same as category of full mukze so again we just give the abbreviation of this machloket between Tanakama and Rabbi Shimon. Now we go to the Mishnah. Uh, and now we go to Gemara, sorry. So since we said in the Mishnah that um, there are several opinions in, in regards to carry candles on Shabbat, now the Gemara said as follows. Tanu Abanan, Metaltelin, Ner Chadash, Avalo Yashan, Divrei Rabbi Yehuda. Which means, one opinion said that the minutes the candles were lit before Shabbat and it's litening over the enters of Shabbat, so therefore it's already forbidden the entire Shabbat, even after it's extinguished. Why? Rashi explained because it's called Mukze Mechamat Isu, that it's become a forbidden because it's forbidden to. Uh, use it on Shabbat, and therefore we are forbid to uh, carry it from one location to another. Rabbi Meir, Omer, Rabbi Meir says, "Kol anerot metaltelin chutz min aner sheidliku ber b'Shabbat." All oil lamps may be moved on Shabbat, except for an oil lamp that they kindle on the Shabbat itself, which means for the purpose of Shabbat. Um, that you cannot uh, carry it after it's extinguished. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Rabbi Shimon hold, call, uh, it, all these different situations that the, the, the candles can be carried, chutz min haner, all lamp may be moved except for an oil lamp, hadolek be Shabbat, that is burning on Shabbat, kavta, if the flame was extinguished, mutar a person can move it from one to another. So Rashi explained and he said, according to Rabbi Shimon, even candles that it was lit in, at, at the beginning of Shabbat, it's not forbidden to carry that uh, candle only again at the time that he is on, that, that it's li lightning, right? Because the fear that maybe Shema Yechabed, that maybe is extinguished, but after the Ne'er, after the candles, it's already extinguished, according to Rabbi Shimon, you can carry it. He is not hold neither Mukze uh, Mechamat Isur nor Mukze Mechamat Mi'uz. Aval Kos Ukeara Vaashashit Lo Yezizem Mimkomam. On the contrary, a cup and a bowl and the lantern that are full of oil with a wick lit in them so a person may not move them from their place even after the flame is extinguished so soon the Gemara will explain it Rabbi El Azar, that's the Girsa in the Rabbi Nuchanan Rabbi El Azar and Rabbi Shimon Omer Mistap Pek minanel hakave umina shemen hametavtef veafilu b'sha'a shaner dolek. Rabbi Yezer said, Rabbi Lazar said that one may supply himself with oil from an extinguished candle and from the oil that was drips from the lamp, and even while the lamp is burning. Why? The Gemara in Beitza, Kav Be 22 said that if a person taking a candle, a, a taking oil from a, a existing lightning candle, he is liable because he is mechabe, he is extinguished. Why? Because the Gemara hold when you have less oil, then the candles is lit in a different level of quality. So when you're taking some of the oil, you cause the light to reduce its level of litening and it's called mechabe bemikzat that is partially extinguishing it so therefore Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Shimon tells us that when the candles is about to finish about to extinguish 
taking some oil makes no big difference for the candle. So therefore it's not considering mechabe, it's not the issue of hibui, which means there is another foundation with that, which is he holds that the candles have the oil and the oil um, it's uh, it's not considered by itself mukze, which means now we learn a new category, ner hakave, which means candles that about to extinguished. Amar Abaye Rabbi Lazar Bar Rabbi Shimon Savala Kavu Abechada or Paligal Abechada. Rabbi Lazar Bar Rabbi Shimon hold the same his father Rabbi Shimon in one area and disagree with his father with another area. Savarle Kavu Abechada he holds like his father in one area, the late lay mukze, that is not considering mukze. Upaligale Abachada the ilu avua the il, that his father Rabbi Shimon Savar kave ein lo kave lo he all that after the candles is extinguished is extinguished but as long uh, that the the candles is not extinguished lo, no the ilu Savar Rabbi Lazar is son old that the candles is allowed afal gav de lo kava even if it's not extinguished so what we understand we understand that it's permitted to carry the lamp and to use the oil that drip from it. So doing so in no way extinguish the flame and uh, you cannot compare it to extinguishing the flame. So in the previous Brayta we hold that Rabbi Shimon um, uh, allowed the leftover of the oil uh, and, um, and he said that as long as the oil is lit the, the, uh, the, uh, as long as the candles is lit, the oil is considering a mukze. Why? Because a person designated that oil for the mitzvah of lighting candles on Shabbat. So he holds that since the mitzvah is over, since the candles is extinguished, so therefore it's completed and he can use. It's not considering a mukze. Aval kos ashashit. However, a cup, a bowl, and lantern, lo meaning after they extinguished, a person should not move them from one location to another. Maishnahane. So what's the difference between this one and the regular candle that Rabbi Shimon allow the candles to be carried after it's extinguished? So Rabbi Shimon doesn't fold that something that it's mukze at the beginning of Shabbat remain for the entire Shabbat. So therefore, the question is, why not allowed to carry those utensils after they extinguished? Amar ula seifa atan Rabbi Yuda. The second part will go by the Rabbi Yuda, that he forbade carrying a cup and a bowl, a lantern, after it's extinguished. Which means, because he holds that if you lead them for Shabbat, it's become a mukze mechamat isur, and you cannot carry it even it's extinguished. Matkifla, <coughs> Marzutra, Marzutra strongly opposed it, and he, he rejected and he said, so you see here that there's no difference between bow and the cup and lantern, that every, all of them it's forbidden from carry, even that it's after that kavu, after the extinguished. Yache, my aval. What does that mean when we use the word aval? But, so what, 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 what's the difference between cup and bowl and lantern that, uh, that it's different from a regular candle? El Amar Marzutra, Leolam Rabbi Shimon. Really, we go by Rabbi Shimon. Bechi Kashre, when Rabbi Shimon allowed um, Rabbi Shimon, uh, he allowed to carry the candles after it's extinguished. He allowed Bener Zuta. It's applied to a small candle. The Da'atei Lavei. Right? Because a person think in advance, he uh, designated in advance before the Shabbat to do what? He planning that uh, use it after he extinguish it. Which means he put an assumption that these candles are going to be extinguished during Shabbat. So therefore, he planning to use it. Aval honey, but this, which is the cup, the bowl, and lantern, dinefiche, that it's large one, and it's planning to be uh, up for the entire Shabbat. Law, Rabbi Shimon did not allow to carry them even after it's extinguished. 
Why? Because the person did not set up a plan before Shabbat to use them later during Shabbat. Which means, according to Rabbi Shimon, we divided between Muktze Mechamat Isu, that it's uh, because it's forbidden to carry it, versus a person that waiting in advance at the twilight that that this item is going to be reused later. So in other words, between a pre-designation setup versus something that it's just become a muktze. Um, so even we said that this small candle that Rabbi Shimon allowed to use in the oil that left over, um, um, it means that um, here again, um, he planning to use the candle. He has a, a, a since he planning to use the candles, he has in his mind in those days, especially in this great need, to use the oil inside. But if you lit in the cup, in the bowl, in the lantern, so he is not planning to use it later. It's over. So now, since we said so far that it's a different opinion between Rabbi Yudah and Beir, if you're allowed to carry an old candle, that Rabbi Yudah forbids, and Rabbi Meir allow, you, you see now that Rabbi Yudah holds that there is a concept, it's called Muktzeh Mechamat Mius, and Rabbi Meir disagree, and he said that uh, it's not always, sometimes it's Muktzeh because of the Isu, because of the prohibition. Amar Rabbi Zeira. So now Rabbi Zeira said, if it's the metal candlestick, it's called pamot in Hebrew, that uh, one kindled on Shabbat, so he said, hamatir, according to Rabbi Shimon, who permits to carry moving an old lamb, No. Or according to a male that allowed to move all the way or Rabbi Shimon that allowed to move them. Asu. So you cannot carry this pamot, uh, this candle uh, uh, stick on Shabbat. Right? So here, again, what's the issue? This candle stick is basically um, lit at the beginning of Shabbat. And now it's Muktze Mechamat Isu. So if it's a Muktze Mechamat Isu, Rabbi Meir holds that you cannot carry it. So you cannot carry it. So um, even he holds that usually it's a Muktze Mechamat Mius, but in certain situations it's also Muktze Mechamat Isu. And according to one who forbids um, a, a old candles, which is Rabbi Yuda, Mutar, you can move this candlestick after Shabbat. So in general, candlestick that made out of metal. So it's something that you can use even after you lit it. Okay, so Abizera teaches us that even this candlestick is lit at the beginning of Shabbat, Rabbi Yudha allowed to carry it after it's extinguished. Because he all that it's a Muktzeh Mechamat Isu, which means that Rabbi Yudha hold the opposite of Rabbi Meir. He forbade Muktze Mechamat Mi'us, and he allowed Muktze Mechamat Isu. Muktze Mechamat Mi'us for those who just walk in. Mechamat Mi'us meaning Muktze you set aside because it's disgusting, it's something that you're not going to use, it's old, it's... Yech. And you have Muktze Mechamat Isu because it's forbidden. Lememra. So now you understand from that. The Rabbi Yuda Muktze Mechamat Mi'us Itlei. He hold. However, Muktze Mechamat Isu lately. Ve'atanya, Rabbi Yudah Omer, Kol Anerot Shel Matechet Metaltelin Chutz Min Aner Shil Likubo B'Shabbat Meaning, every metal candlestick, old metal candlestick, since it's become Ma'us, the minutes you're lighting with it, for example, a copper, that it's not swallowed the oil, Right? So he said, you can carry them, excluding the candle that you lit for Shabbat. So you, what do you derive from that? That Rabbi Yudah hold that Muktzeh Mechamat Isu is also sometimes applicable. Ela itmar, ache itmar. If you study, you should learn it as follows. Amar Abizera, pamot shi'idliku alav b'Shabbat, the candle slick that you lit on Shabbat, 
לדברי הכל אסור. Meaning, both רבי יהודה ורבי מאיר say that it's forbidden to carry. לא הדליקו עליו, if you don't clean it for Shabbat, לדברי הכל מותר. Everyone allowed to carry it, even an old one. So let's wrap it up all the four conditions in the din of Mukze. Set aside. One, Rabbi Yudah hold. Rabbi Yudah hold that both Mukze Mechamat Isur, Mukze Mechamat Mi'us, both of them applicable. Rabbi Meir, he hold Mukze Mechamat Isur, but not Mukze Mechamat Mi'us. Third one is, no help me. The third one is Rabbi Shimon. That Rabbi Shimon, he doesn't hold both idea of Mukze. He allowed that basic, he allowed to carry it. And the only thing he said that something that you designate for certain mitzvah, for example, candles that lit on Shabbat. For Shabbat. For Shabbat. So the same, he said, Rabbi Shimon will hold that Mukze for, the, for Isur, if he doesn't plan to use it, for example, cup, bowl, and lantern, so um, um, you cannot use it. And the last one, the fourth one, is Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Shimon. He is not old, even Mukze le Mitzvah. So he allow, he go to the extreme, he allowed to use the oil, even the candle is still um, up, is still lightning. Okay? The, the Ritva elaborated on that. Anyway. Omar Rav Yudah Marav Mita sheyichada lemaot asur letaltela There are beds that the person designate that bed to put the money. For example, let's say it's before Shabbat, person open his pockets, make sure that there's no money left, and he have a certain location that he knew already in advance that that location he pull out all of his money and he live there. So it's like he designated that bed, for example, to put there ma'ot, to put there money. So he said, since you designated to certain purpose, so um, um, uh, a, a person uh, 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 cannot use that bed for any other purposes, even he did not yet use it for for you for money but since it was already designated and it's under the category of mukze meaning it's set aside so therefore you cannot asura betiltul you cannot carry it meitivei rav nachman bar yitzchak rav nachman bar yitzchak raised the objection to rav yuda from our mishnah and he said metal telin ner chadash avalo yashan he said one may move a new oil lamp on shabbat but not old one, which means specifically old one that he, he already used it in, uh, in, in actual matter, it's considering mukte, it's set aside. But a candle that he didn't use yet for lighting, so it's not mukte, even you designate for that. So meaning by saying avaloyashan, but not old, we meant to say that um, the whole prohibition is only if you are in practical manner, you lit it with that. So what we understand so far, the reason for Mukze, number one, Shabbat is different. Second, Chashash Adam Yavoli Deisu, it's a fear that a person may attend to, um, to come to a prohibition. So there are basically many reasons, five we mentioned, but there are many reasons why the sages put the law of set aside for Mukze. We turn the page and we said 44b uman ner de lehache avida and if it's just a lamp which is made for this purpose which is for lighting it ki lo idlik ba sharelet el tula if a person did not lighten it he is permitted to move it so now mita a bed which is the love lehache avida which was not made for the placing money on it. Lo kol sheken. All it's more so, moving it will be permitted. Right? So because, because he didn't begin using it for that purpose. Elai i itmar, hache itmar. But if you learn, stated as follow, you stated. Omar Rav Yudam Arav. 
Mitashi Chadale Maot, if you take a bed and you designate it for the purpose of using it for money. So in other words, just to, to make sure that we understand that um, a person designated that bed, uh, he designated it um, before Shabbat. So even he took out the money, Rashi said, in advance, it's still under the category of set aside. Meaning, we taking the whole concept of Yichut, a person designated something, that it's become already set aside. Because this bed is considering basis le davarasu, a foundation of something forbidden, and therefore we cannot use it for other purposes. So, Omar Rav Yudah Amar Rav Mita, Shei Chada Le Maot, Eniach Alei Maot, Asur Le Taltela. Lo Eniach Maot Mutar Le Taltela. So he hold, as long as you don't put money on that bed, you can carry it. In other words, he said that even you designated it, but as long as you don't put money, you can go ahead and use it. Lo Yichada Le Maot. But if he didn't designate that bed for, for the sake of putting it um, 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 money, yes, if it's carry money, you cannot move that bed from one location to another. Which means even one time he put money on that bed, but since now at this very present moment is no money there, he can do it. Who with condition shelo ayu alea. Ben Ashmashot, that as long as it's no money on it during the twilight period between the Shabbat Eve and Shabbat, so because if there was money in that time, the bed itself become mukze aside, set aside. Why? Because that's the, the Migo that we said, that this Migo did Katsai, you hear it from me many times, because since it became Basis Le Davarasu, and we had that the minutes that Migodit, Katsai Ben Ashmoshor, it Katsai Lekule Yoma, the minutes it become Mukze in a twilight, it become Mukze the entire day, so therefore cannot use it. So now, <coughs> Amar Ula, Ula challenged that, and he said, Mativ Rabbi Lazar. Now he bringing Ilchot Umav et Ara, and that's the Mishnah in Tracted Kalim, that dealing with law of ritual impurity and discuss the relationship between the wagon and the undercarriage. Mukhnishela, you have a wagon that they have, for example, a dead body, for example, person that they have a discharge. So the wheel of that a, a wagon, because it's part of the wagon, but it's indirect part of the wagon. So they said, Bizman Shehi Nishmetet, Bizman Shehi Nishmetet which means at the time that they, um, they, it's detached from the wagon, which means you can remove it from the wagon, it's not considering part of the wagon, because that wheel is, in that sense, detached. And ve ein nimdedet ima, which means usually wouldn't, vessels, uh, it's potential to accept impurity, ritual impurity, Tum'ah, but it's in a condition that you can carry it. But uh, uh, here, it's different because um, if you can remove the wheel from its wagon, it's considering a detachable item. Now, Ve'ein matzelet ima Be'ohel hamet, which means when a person or utensils pass by an area that it's a corpse, so it's considering ohel, it's like the tent, that the dead body is there. There are different size. There is an ohel that in the size of a hand breath. There is an ohel that in the size of much more. Be but because here we hold that the muhni, that the, the wheel, it's part of the wagon, so it's a hold that it's something that it can accept impurity, 
and uh, and um, and he said, and therefore, ve'ain gorerim ota, and you cannot carry that wagon be'shabbat bizman sheyesh ale amaot, and that's the key point. You cannot carry it on Shabbat because there's money there. So there is a Rashi here that say kilomar. It's a very rough Rashi. Ve'ina matzelat ima bo'el amet because the ma'od, the money, um, 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 not because of the impurity. So Rashi here said, So basically, um, in my book, I elaborate a lot on this Rashi, what it meant by saying Kloman. It's a very long and hard to understand Rashi, but um, 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 the, the Tosfot here, the Buhamad Hil Ve'ein, tried to elaborate on this Rashi, and the Marsha explained the Rashi here, but basically, the, to make very, very short, the key point it's involved with the money that it's carried, not the issue of impurity. Um, so, meaning that as long as the Mukhni, as long as the will carries money, so it's considering Basis le Davara Asu, and therefore you cannot carry that wagon. However, um, um, if you go by the Mishnah, um, the whole purpose of forbidding the Mukhni is as long as the Mukhni, the, the, the will, carries money. Ha en alea ma'ot. But if there's no money on it, therefore, Sharia, it's permitted. Meaning to, to move the wagon. Af al gav de havu alea ben ashmashot. Which means even though there was money in a twilight. So the Ramban. And the Rambam, they hold that Mukhni is not a wheel, Mukhni is like a, a Megera, is like a, a draw, that uh, it's inside the like cupboard, etc. And they have a different category of Mukhni. But here they said that, that the key point is if it still has money there or not. Um, in other words, we disregard the point that it, it was money in the twilight, is just... The whole point, if now at this very moment, it's considering Mukhtse or not. The response for that, they said, Ha'hi Rabbi Shimon hi. This Brita, this Mishnah hold according to Rabbi Shimon. The late lay Mukhtse, who's not hold the prohibition of Mukhtse, of set aside, which means any chefetz, any item that was Mukhtse in a twilight, it's not considering a muktze for the entire Shabbat. He doesn't hold that migo. Now, if you remember, we said in a previous page a situation of fire. And we said that in a certain situation you can take an infant or bread and then you can move it in a side. So here we go to Rab. The Rab that forbids to carry that bed, that, it, that it carry that money, Rabbi he holds the same as Rabbi Yudas that is strict in the Lalacha of Mukze. And because this bed becomes basis, a foundation of the Davara Asu, of something that's forbidden, so it's a Mukze the entire Shabbat. So um, um, uh, if you go by the Rabbi Shimon, by having an infant or, or, or bread, you can carry it. But if you go by the Rabbi Yudas, that he said that this Migo, that meaning that the minutes that it's become Mukze, set aside in the eve of Shabbat, it's become an, a, a, a Mukze for the entire Shabbat. So therefore the bed, even you take out the money from the bed, it's still forbidden. We study several important halachot today. First we study Motar Hashem and Shebaner, what's the oil that's left over in a candle. Which means if there is a remaining oil in the lamp, so the Rambam in Ilchot Shabbat chapter 5 said, Asur, it is prohibited to use oil remaining in an oil lamp on Shabbat because it was set aside from use when Shabbat began. That's by the way the Magen of Ram also and according to the Ran. Kol anerot metaltelin, chutz bin aner, shidliku ba b'Shabbat and all the oil um, may, uh, lamps may be moved on Shabbat except for an oil lamp that was lit that they lit on the Shabbat it is prohibited to move an oil lamp that was burning on Shabbat 
even after it is no longer burning and no oil remains. Because it's mukze, it's set aside while burning at twilight. So we said this migo, we explained many times, migo did katsai ben ashmashot, it katsai lekule yauma. The minutes that you make it set aside in a twilight, it's already for the entire day. The last halacha of today, ma'ot alamita, we discuss the situation that you have a bed that it's designated for uh, putting money, and it's a money on the bed. So therefore, the Rambam said in Chod Shabbat chapter 25, it is prohibited to move a bed that has money on it on Shabbat, or even one that is no longer has money on it, but had money on it when Shabbat began. The prohibition, the Rama said, is applicable even if someone wants to use the bed or requires the area where the bed is located. That's the Rav opinion. However, if there is no money on a bed, or there was none when Shabbat began, even though it is designated and utilized for planning, placing money on during the week, it is permitted to move the bed, which is like any other vessels whose use is prohibited on Shabbat, because Rabbi Shimon holds that the halacha of mukze, of set aside, does not apply in that case. And that, by the way, the Shulchan Or, Chor uh, 310, and that's the, the Rema. Now does that, in practical terms, does that apply to anything that you might put money in? Like, for example, if you put money in your wallet and you took it out and set it on your dresser before Shabbat, should you not move that then for the entire day? Like even to put it in another place within the house? Yes. You should not move it. Because the, in, it's a good question. The halachot of mukze, it's set aside. Mm -hmm. The minute it's set aside, so any so money, yeah. any money, right. any location. Shuloim, Malachai, 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 Shuloim, Malachai,